It's time once again for the Mythwits, the show dedicated to all things geek pop culture, drenched in absurdity and coated with sarcasm. Every week we bring on an industry guest to talk about the ever-expanding Geekoverse, or tattoos. We do our damnedest to be funny, but there are no guarantees. I'm your host, Peter Bryant, and joining me on this episode is my co-host, Mike Kafis. How you doing? <laughs> doing well. Uh, and our guest this week is Jim Judicus. How's it going? Hey. Uh, Jim is the owner of Saints and Sinners Tattoo in Fells Point neighborhood in Balt- a Balt- a good old Baltimore, Maryland. He has been tattooing for 25 years, all of which in the Baltimore area. And Jim is a good, close, personal friend of mine. I'm so happy to have him on because it's, it's been a while. I think I talked to you about this a couple years ago, Jim, and yeah. we're finally fucking getting around to doing it. But, um, you know, so Jim is my tattoo artist, uh, my, my favorite tattoo artist. He, he's done most of the work on my body, almost all but one little thing, which we'll talk about tonight, because I'm going to reveal a new tattoo I got this past year uh, that my wife hates. So anyway, Jim, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. So... Yeah, you've been tattooing 25 fucking years. That's got, I mean, your hand has got to be years. getting getting kind of shaky at this point. So you, you thinking about making a career of this or uh, what, man? What's, what's yeah, it's crossed my mind. You know, it's oh. really funny that sometimes people ask me, like, is this your full time job? Oh, my God. <laughs> <But> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, as I understand it, I mean, you were you were talking before about making really good money before you went into business, and then you had to like, you know, you had to do the whole business thing. So you're, you know, you have to like actually pay for your own shop and your own everything. Um, but so tattoo artists make pretty good living, huh? Uh, they can, it, it, you know, if they're uh, dedicated and devoted, and they do good work. Obviously, uh, there's plenty of crappy artists out there who are just getting by, or maybe not even doing that, or maybe they have to have a second job. But uh, for the most part, most tattooers these days make a pretty decent living. Yeah, I guess with anything, you know, if you, you know, you treat it like like a real profession, you know, you show up every time, you're on time, you treat your customers with, uh, you know, uh, care and, and, and respect, uh, you do good work, you're dedicated, uh, you'll make good money. I mean, it's just like any other job. But if you slack off and, you, you know, you show up drunk to work, <laughs> you're not going to do so well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I would think you, you have to at least first and foremost, though, be a good artist. Like, I could tattoo technique. I could learn the technique of tattooing. But I'll give you stick figures and, uh, you know, first grade <laughs> lettering and shit. So I don't know if anyone can be a tattoo artist. Uh, I think that there's a possibility, like there's potential there uh, because it is a, a craft that you can learn or a trade that you can learn. And um, as long as you learn like how to do everything correctly, a lot of it is like color by number. You're tracing outlines. Um, well, at least uh, at some shops, you know, if someone comes in and picks a design off the wall. You're just going to make it look just like that. And then you have machines to make the stencil of just the line. So you're just tracing it and then you're coloring it in just like with the colors that you see on the flash design. So it is possible to not be a great artist and still make a good tattoo. And the guy who taught me was basically that. Uh, so I wanted to ask you about this. So there's a, there's a, I had a ton of questions. Got a ton of questions. So when you you draw it up on the there's the the paper you draw it up on, which is like a transfer type paper. Uh, what, tell me tell me about that paper. What is is, is there is there like ink on one like a like a transfer ink on one side? Like how how does that work? Uh, so we don't draw it up on that paper. We draw it draw it on regular paper, uh, or at least standard. Has in the past has been on paper. Nowadays we're using iPad Pros, um, but it's been on paper. And then we feed that paper. We put it between two sheets. It's like a carbon paper, and feed it through this machine that was a transparency maker. Um, that was kind of found by accident for this use of this application. Um, but then it basically prints out a carbon copy that you stick to the skin. Oh, sweet. Okay. And is it wet or do you, do, you rub, do you like just rub it or do you wet it or I can't remember? It's dry. We put some like a solution, a soap or like a melted down speed stick kind of solution on the skin first and then stick the, the copy of paper on there and uh, it sticks. It transfers. We pull the paper off and the, the purple line image is still on there. Okay. All right. That's cool. So 
let, let's go back to the, to the early days. So uh, when you first started tattooing, because uh, you had mentioned in, in your, your, your show doc that, um, that the technology has changed since you started, I, mean, I guess in 26 years or 25 years it's changed. <laughs> so, so what was it, as opposed to today, what was the technology like when you first started? Um, the technology, a lot of the technology is the same. A lot of people choose to use the same style of machines, power supplies, inks, needles, all those sort of things. Um, and the same kind of things that they've used for years before I started tattooing, um, which is like a coil machine or an electromagnet machine. Um, and then you have like a steel tube and the needles are soldered to the tip of a needle bar that runs through and attaches to the armature and apply a power to the electromagnetic coils and pulls the armature bar down and then it breaks the contact and it goes back up. So you're getting this like fast up and down motion, which is how you're putting the tattoo in the skin. Um, so that's been the same all the way through and there's still a lot of people that use those machines, but uh, there's been a revolution in recent years of rotary machines. Um, people have been redesigning and redefining them and how they work and how they can apply the, the uh, tattoos. So um, it, you see a lot of people using rotaries nowadays where back when I first started, you almost never saw people with rotary machines. All right, so, so what's a rotary? I mean, is, is that like a cam? Is it on a cam system? Like a, like a, like a spring yeah, so cam? It's like, or? Just as it sounds, it's, it spins around. There's a mm -hmm. cam. Um, a needle um, would attach to the cam if it was a direct drive rotary. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and right. so you're getting kind of like a churning motion. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's others that convert that. They put like a little bar on the end that redirects it go it has the same churning motion but it transfers it to an armature bar which is just going straight up and down so you get a linear motion out of the rotary uh, and there's you know some people like one some people like the other and then um, they've even gone further newer technology is um, rotary machines with cartridges so no longer are we using like the long needle bars with the needles on the ends or using a specific type of grip and then the needles are on this like plastic cartridge tip that is interchangeable with the grip. So you can use one machine for all your different needle configurations instead of having to set up a different machine for each one. Okay. All right. So, so like for example, when you're saying different configurations, so you mean like, like your line work versus your shading work? Yeah. And like each line, like there's so many different types of liners. You start with like a single needle liner, which almost nobody uses these days. But um, it goes to a three liner, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen. Um, then uh, your shaders, you can have round shaders, you can have magnum shaders, round magnum shaders, and you know, again, all different numbers of needles in there. So with um, the coil machines, uh, it's tried and true, they work great. I mean, they're definitely better for lining than rotaries, but um, you would have to kind of pick which tools you normally use. Like you're going to use like a three liner and a five liner or a five and a seven. So you're going to buy different tubes for those tips. Uh, whereas with shading, you might use a seven mag and a 13 mag. So you're going to buy tubes that have those tips. And those are going to be the like basic four tools that you're going to use all the time for all your tattoos. Whether you would like to use another needle configuration or not, like you would have to buy other stuff to allow for other ne needle configurations. Whereas with the cartridge system, you have one grip and it takes any cartridge. So you can have, you know, 25, 30 different types of um, needle configurations that will all work with the same grip. Nice. Uh, is there continuous um, ink feeding yet? Or is that still no. a dip, dip, and dip, <laughs> it's, dip? Oh, it's well. dip and rip. <laughs> oh, well. Dip and rip. I like dip that. Dip and rip. Nice. Okay, I got you. So I have to ask you, so there was, when you did, when you did mine and, um, there, there was uh, you were doing a lot of black in it, and you were trying out uh, you were you were guinea pigging me for a new needle you were using. It had some kind of like cross or coarse or something. It was textured. Know. Textured, okay. The textured needle. The textured needles um, were designed to hold a little more ink, so they can get a little more ink in the tattoo. If you're doing something solid like tribal or just a solid color, um, it'll allow you to get the pack the color in a little faster, you know, get through your tattoo a little quicker without going over it so much, maybe cause less trauma so that it heals better. Okay. 
Well, it it, it worked out because I, I I was uh, it, it looks good. <laughs> it's good. So so what what kind of um, so I know the attitudes have changed of tattoos like immensely over the years. Um, I don't know if they, were they coming into the popular culture when you first started or had that had that started yet. I think it was just happening then. Um, cause when I started, there were really only like about four reputable shops around the Baltimore area. And I was lucky enough to start off at one of those and, um, none of them in the city though, all like surrounding the city. And, uh, it was old school, like biker owned shops. Typically, um, people came in and they chose a design off the wall. There wasn't a whole lot of custom stuff being done. Um, the attitude was a little different. We were still frowned upon, you know, by many, uh, you know, a lot of the public, you know, wouldn't see people working in public jobs that had tattoos on their hands or forearms or something. Uh, it was pretty rare to see that. It was pretty rare to see someone that had a full sleeve back in those days. Right. Um, and that's definitely started to change. I'd say about five years into my career, we started doing bigger stuff, custom stuff started coming in and um, the public's opinion of tattoos started to change. You know, as soon as athletes and celebrities and public figures start getting tattooed, then everybody wants to get tattooed and, you know, it just changes everything. Yeah, I got one on that. Uh, real, I'm sorry, Mike, I'll let you jump in. You, you just give me okay. one second because I got something right to that. I, I worked, I've worked in engineering all my life and I worked for this company, um, uh, Morrison Ritchie, and so I was at this company picnic, and I had been working there about two years, and I was, you know, big time producer, did a lot of lot of really great work for them, and uh, I was we were, they were having a picnic, and I was I was I had a short sleeve shirt on that day because it's one of those really professional ones. I had to wear I had to wear like a like a you know a collared long sleeve shirt and khakis every day, and so I'm you know I'm just wearing my regular clothes, and and the guy one of the, the my boss the, my next up guy says. He's looking at my arm. He's like, "Oh, you have a tattoo?" And I was like, "Yeah." And I showed it to him. And he says, "He says, you know, I'm really glad that I didn't see that when when I interviewed you." He's like, "Because I wouldn't have hired you." And he's like, "And I'm really glad that I hired you, because you're you're an awesome, you know, designer and and, and CAD person." And that's uh, exactly why that's fucked up. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Dick. But, but but I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna say one thing though about that. What's really cool is that he admitted it. And I think I changed his mind about that. I yeah. changed his perspective because he had a prejudice that he may no longer have. Right. So that was that was kind of cool. But yeah, that attitude, especially in engineering. I mean, it's it's a, you know, it's it's a very conservative field. Um, but what's really cool is when I started at the company I'm at now. I work for the government now. Um, the the guy that that I was interviewing with. He shows up, he comes walking, and he has a t-shirt, has a Ramones t-shirt on, right? And he had two full sleeves. You might even know him. He, he plays in a band. He's, he, he or used to play in a band. He kind of does a little bit. You ever heard of a band called the Huntingtons? No. Okay, well, there's a million bands. But anyway, this guy, Mike, he's, he's in really? the band. Really? Because he has tattoos, so. Whatever. No, no, no. No, no, no. no I wasn't talking about I was talking about that he's in a band in the scene right. and whatever. I know. Local. Anyway. But and he's local, right? He's local to Baltimore. So anyway, he he. I saw that and I was like, oh, this is the right place. This is where I need to be. Like my boss has got two sleeves. Like it's gonna, it's gonna be awesome. So anyway, yes. Yeah, so, so the attitudes are changing. It's it's good. Oh, All yeah. right. So I got um a couple questions in the chat room so far. Um, a Jenny Lynn is asking about that's my baby. Anyway, she's asking about a. Um, white ink and or black light tattoos. Is that is that technology gotten any better? Is it worth even looking into, even for just hues or? The uh, the black light activated ink it was. I'm not really even sure how to describe it. It was kind of <laughs> silly. <laughs> I mean, unless you're hanging out at the club every night that has mm -hmm. black light ink, like what's the point in getting something like that? Um, there was black light ink for a while and there were concerns that it might be cancerous or, you know, something like that. Not very good for your body to mm -hmm. be injecting it in there. Um, but I haven't seen it in ages. It's probably mm -hmm. been at least 10 years since I've seen UV ink. So I'm not sure that anyone still makes it anymore. Okay. As so UV's out. Goes, How about white ink? Just as white far ink, as the coloring. I mean, for, there's a trend of people, mainly girls wanting to get white tattoos uh, it's kind of a waste of time. Uh, white ink, 
doesn't show up very well on your skin, it's really good to use as like a highlight um, against darker tones. So it creates a good contrast. Um, but just white ink on light skin, and even dark skin was not going to show up. The inks are translucent, so the darker your skin is, the darker the inks are going to appear. But um, uh, just a white tattoo, as it heals down the road, it turns to kind of a creamy color anyway. So you're not going to see much of it down the road. Some people might like that it's disappearing over time, but again, it just seems like pointless. So, because so, I was going to ask gonna about get a tattoo. Wait, wait. Well, well, hold on, because I was going to ask about like um, African American skin being if it's really dark skin, that might be a better can no. um, canvas for white well, ink. I, but it's still not going to look good if it's it going to show up less. Okay. Well, wow. Okay. Like I said, yeah. it translucent. It's the darker you are, the darker the inks will appear. So white won't show up on dark skin. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. So okay, I, and and Scott, also, right? but yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, well, you do you want to read it? No, no, if okay. you've already read it. Okay, okay. So Scott's asking, because um, he, he had a question about 3D effects, and then I asked him specifically what. So he said, so I wanted, I wanted a tattoo for a while now, and I'm a carpenter. I wanted my union logo on my forearm, but I wanted, to, I wanted it to look like it's uh, caved as, uh, carved as with a chisel, and I've been unable to find, such, such, uh, find much out there like that. Uh, on the East Coast, he's there in uh, Massachusetts, or uh, what are they in the uh, Maine or something? And uh, but he wants to know if that looks anything close to what is is that possible to get anything close to what he's sure. looking for? Yeah, we can do um, like tricks with like shading and highlights to make things look like it's carved into the skin, or it's embossed, or it's branded into the skin. I've done lots of stuff like that. Okay, or we could just carve it into the skin. Yeah. Like, yeah. all right, uh, <laughs> just carve it in. I mean, so barring like you know, he having to commit to coming all the way down here and doing all that, is there a place he can go to find something like that, like three D effects? Uh, is there a place that you would know right off the top of your head to find that? Island, carve Mike? It? Not up there. I mean, he, <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, I I meant like uh, examples of it. Find a oh well, I mean, you could look online. I'm sure you'd find images that uh, you could bring to the local tattoo shop and. Show him, hey, I want something like this, but I want this logo. Right, but if if he has been looking around and hasn't found the a place, is there come, a place come to that you Baltimore. would suggest? Just come to Baltimore. No, when I say place, <laughs> I mean a place on the on the internet that he could go to to find what he's looking for, oh. so that he could show it to somebody. Like, yeah, this is, place is there a called Google Images? Right, but I mean, is there a specific place that you know tattooing? Ah, oh, come on. You know what I'm saying. Don't troll me, Jim. No, man, just just Google image that shit, 3D tattoos. It, it'll come up. All right. Uh, Sorry, Scott, I tried. <laughs> you should be able to find a place near him that can do something like that, as long as they're not, like, uh, stuck-up guys that only do old-school tattoos or they only do, like, eight-hour tattoos or something like that. Well, I tell you what, Scott seems like he's uh, he's committed. So he wants to come down. He wants to bring um, his his wife down too. So they're good oh, friends wow. of ours that we uh, yeah. we hang out with them up in uh, Massachusetts. Yeah, so make come a on down, man. It. Yeah, definitely. Right, hey, Scott, Scott. So your wife wants to jump out of an airplane with me when I turn fifty. Both of you come down. You go get a tattoo. Patron and I will jump out of a fucking airplane. Everybody's happy. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> So, all right, come on now. So anyway, so so what are the so the styles, right? So this, I'm assuming in the last 25 years, what people want to get tattooed. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot that stays the same, but but what trend wise, what are you seeing different now? Because I know it was God, what was in the 90s it was like fairies. Everybody wanted fairies or something. Uh, the 90s was like fairies, tribal, uh, torn skin. Uh, you know, there's a bunch of stuff that we all think is kind of cheesy now. But a lot of it's coming back. So uh, some of the trends recently have been like watercolor style tattoos. Oh, I like those. Which is kind of silly that they call it watercolor because right. watercolor is basically just painting. And I've seen plenty of realistic watercolor paintings. Um, but sure, like black lines with like a bunch of splattered colors on there. You want to call that watercolor style, that's fine. Um, mandalas are really popular right now. Um, dot work tattoos where instead of like shading they it's shaded with dots like pointillism like an old comic book right or or, or... uh a little finer than that mm, so okay. actually when it heals it almost looks like it was shaded 
um because they will like kind of tone down over time a little bit but uh, it's a really cool effect and uh it really pans out over time really really well nice uh, and then there's always the little trends like um semicolon tattoos you know and um like or like uh, trash, infinity symbols polka. with names in them. Oh, yeah, trash polka. That's popular now, too. That's another current trend. Blank awareness, right? <laughs> Whatever awareness is the new thing for a tattoo, right? Geometry tattoos. Mm. Oh, I hear the tramp stamp is making a nice... Uh... No, I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 all right, all right, Jim. Uh, two, one question. Adrian um, is asking, uh, which, bo which body part is the hardest or most difficult to tattoo on? There's a lot, actually. Um, the ribs are not an easy place to get or give tattoos. Well, not an uh, easy place to take them, Jim. Not an easy yeah. place to take them. <laughs> it's, and because it's not easy to take them, people tend to move a lot. They squirm a lot. Um, it's just not an easy canvas to work on there. Uh, and then other places like the throat, like less popular places, the throat, the head, you know, behind the knee. I, um, I imagine the scrotum isn't all that fun i wouldn't know oh. <laughs> doesn't do that. <laughs> you know it's funny good so, answer good answer so the, i have i have one one of the ones that jim did for me like i drew it out and we did the whole thing and when it laid out it wound up kind of going into my into the area a little bit right and jim was like jim was like you're shaving that no i'm not shaving it ends that. here <laughs> <laughs> right, pretty much. I had no intention for it to go there. Just that was the size that it went. Because a big tattoo and it was on my side. And um, I, I mean, I you know, tattooing in that spot is one thing, but shaving that spot—that's a little intimate. A, yeah, 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 yeah. I took care of it. I took care of it. But I gotta tell you, oh my god, when you were doing the. So I'll describe to me. I felt the ribs was like it was like you were putting it in with a cigar. Like you had a nice red hot cigar and you were just burning that fucker in there. Holy shit, that was painful. I white knuckled that some bitch the whole way. Yeah, not a fun spot. And it didn't get better. Like, like you know, people say, "Oh yeah, go into a zone." There was no fucking zone. There was, <laughs> there was no zone. <laughs> shit just hurt the whole time. Well, that's another improvement we have now is uh, lidocaine sprays that don't work like they only work when the skin is broken so if someone's getting a large tattoo and they start to get to a, a rough spot where uh, they might not be able to continue we take a break spray it down cover it with saran wrap for a while let it soak in and then come back to it 15 minutes later and it's all numbed up and you can keep going for another couple hours huh hell with that man i took that shit the whole time and I think I, I had to take one break because you were you were going along. I, re I remember this. I remember because I was like, I'm just sitting I'm just like, oh, my God, this is so fucking painful. And we got to this one point and I think I was just like, all right, stop, 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 stop. And I got up and I had to just like kind of walk around for a minute. And I was like, OK, I'm good. And I lay back down and let you finish. But it was just, oh, yeah, you do. You, you, I just got to this point. I was just like, OK, 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 stop, stop, please, God, stop. Yeah, it's all tough right. to get past that point. Yeah. So my mom's in the chat room. And she wants to know what kind of tattoos are grandmothers uh, getting these days. Oh, and yeah. I'm going to I'm going to kind of supplement that with, uh, as of late, can you think about the oldest uh, man and or woman that you have tattooed? Sure, I, uh, I tattooed a rose on a woman on her 80th birthday. Nice, mom, you're still good. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny said cookie recipes. That's what they're tattooing. But anyway, <laughs> and, and grandmothers get whatever they want. <laughs> That's yeah. right. That's right. Big skull on her neck. You know? Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> no, I would imagine. So I imagine older people, um, a lot of times they get stuff that remind them of people in their life or events in their life. Or, or what, what do you see a lot of? It's different with everybody. You know, some people want like a memorial tattoo uh, when they're older. Some people just want what they want. They'll get flowers. They'll get skulls. They'll, you know, do whatever. It's really not too different from the younger crowd you know and there's there's a saying that people say well, what is that going to look like when you're 80 i'm like i don't give a fuck my skin's gonna be melting off i don't give a shit i'm gonna have yeah. hair i'm gonna have eyebrows that are like this right. long do you really think i care about it fucking like hair's gonna be growing out of my ears <laughs> right. a saggy tattoo 
Don't yeah. give Just a fuck. Problems. When people used to ask me that, I'd say, when, when I'm 70 years old, I'll be happy to eat solid food. Yeah, no <laughs> shit. I'd be happy to poop without a diaper. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so, yeah. so, so right, let, let's talk about the early days. So you, I happen to know, so you're a friend of mine. So I happen to know, you went to art school. Like you're actually, you're not just some guy who picked up a tattoo gun and like was, you know, was sketching and stuff. Not to take anything away from people that are, because there are plenty of people who are great artists that didn't go to art school, but you actually did. You went to art school. I did. Yep. I uh, wasn't sure what road I was going to go down. I just happened to have some art talent and I was really like dedicated to go down that course. And, you know, halfway through art school, I was like, well, what the hell am I going to do with an art degree? So I thought maybe I'd be a teacher. I started taking education classes and then I ran out of money. So I missed my last year, but uh, I fell into this and here I am making a career out of art. Yeah, no, that's awesome. That that is that's really mm -hmm. cool. So like when people talk about you know they want to be an artist for a living, it's like hey, it's very hard to do, but you can find avenues, and if you work hard, uh, you know it always it always boils down to how hard you work and what kind of dedication you put to it, just like any other job. Yeah. Um. So so how does how does somebody become a tattoo artist? So like let's say I'm, you know I'm a, you know I sketch really well, and I think you know I think hey I've got a talent for this. I would like to enter this life. Um, how does a person get into the, the tattooing life? Uh, well, it's, it's not that easy. Uh, a lot of people have chosen like the back road ways where they'll just order some equipment online and like, Oh, that looks easy. I'll just get a startup kit and tattoo my friends and <laughs> see what hey, happens. You know? Come here. <laughs> <laughs> it's how a lot of people have gotten their start, but like the, the proper way is to get an apprenticeship and, um, to do something like that you'd have to show like a portfolio of your work to you know, a shop that would consider taking on an apprentice and uh, you know, they, they see the art talent in you and you definitely seem like you have a drive and a commitment, then um, they offer you a, a, um, an apprenticeship and then you just take it from there. Some shops will charge you for an apprenticeship. Some shops will teach you for free, but then you stay and work there for a while for free. So they're making money off you that way. Um, but yeah, it's, I, I went through an apprenticeship, so I feel like, you know, I paid my dues. I did it the right way. Uh, and nowadays there's so many more shops, so many people that want to get into it. I'm not really sure how they're going about it now. I know that apprenticeships are still happening, uh, but I'm not sure how they're happening, um, and how people are getting into those apprenticeships. I, I hear, uh, jail apprenticeships are pretty popular too. <laughs> oh yeah. You know? <laughs> so I mean like like okay so I've, let, let's say I'm gonna tattoo my I'm gonna do my first tattoo and I've got, I've got the gun and everything how do I like how do I practice like how do I mean I don't want to just because it's permanent right I don't want to like just start etching away on somebody's skin and like fuck them up like how do I how do I do it without messing them up it's yeah, a practice that's, ink? that's the tricky part well no? back in the day uh, during your apprenticeship you would do all sorts of other stuff first when they thought that you were ready to try tattooing somebody, they would have you call a friend down to try tattooing on them. But that's, this is after a long time of watching them tattoo, asking questions. We used to put pens in the grips of the uh, tattoo machines. We'd get used to the weight of the machine. And um, nowadays, um, I mean, I've heard stories of people tattooing pig skin or yeah, grapefruits. Yeah, I, I was getting ready to say that. But um, it's just not the same. Wow. You know, it's like, live skin moves it breathes uh it's different textures different contours um nothing really comes close to it they started making this prod product called second skin or uh, a, a pound of flesh and they do like like a hand or a foot um and then you like it's made up of this material some sort of silicone type material that's similar to skin and people are tattooing on those things to practice hmm. I know uh, uh, the 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 first and only tattoo I ever did was on your wife. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> one night, so one night, just for the and it was a dice. Night, <laughs> yeah, what? Yeah, it was. It was dice. So for all my gamer friends who are watching, I tattooed somebody with dice. Uh, we we went out. And we were had maybe a few too, much too to many. Drink. Yeah. 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 And we're back yep. to Jim's shop, and Drunk Tara's and like, I want all my friends to put tattoos on me. So a bunch <laughs> of us did, and then Jim went back and fixed all of them. But apparently, apparently, my wife did the best one on her out of all of her friends, uh, from what I hear. From what I hear, I don't know that she did the little cupcake. Apparently, that needed yep. the least amount of fixing. 
So, <laughs> so that was a thing. <laughs> yeah, it was. And uh, it's sometimes she still tries to get that to be a thing. <laughs> well, oh, oh, Tara, stop. <laughs> stop. Oh, dear. No, it was a bad idea the first time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, so all right. So we got uh, Scott says uh, 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 he has uh, his wife Petra wants to know uh, your thoughts on vegetable ink. He said her tattoo is all vegetable ink. Uh, I'm not sure what companies make vegetable ink, uh, and I'm not sure how they differ from like the top brands. I mean, some of the brands claim that they're organic. <clears throat> if that's not good enough for you, then. I guess we can try to find some vegetable ink, but I have no idea like what it's like, how good it is, how long it lasts. And if it's a newer product, nobody knows how long it'll last, and what it'll right. look like 10 years from now. A vegan right. tattoo. Right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, are they glu- can I get one that's gluten-free? No GMOs. Uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Cruelty-free. Right. <laughs> Free-range tattoos. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So all right, let, let's get some, there's some serious I got some serious questions. Some of them I came up with. I was doing some research on tattooing, and some of the things I came across, and I was just wondering. Um, so I saw this was really neat. They, they, someone had mentioned doing uh, a tattooing Alzheimer's patients with their name on them so that if they get lost, like they wander loose from like a hospital or a hospice or wherever they're being taken care of, that they would get, um, they get their name tattoos so people could find them, maybe their address. Uh, have you, have you I mean, seen they could anything wear a bracelet. like that? <laughs> yeah, they could, they could wear a sure, bracelet. Sure, I've seen the movie Memento. Oh, sure, yeah, right? sure. Right, right, right. <laughs> so, all right, but, but uh, okay, so all right, what about cancer survivors? Have you, have you tattooed well, any cancer? Like, back to your, uh, your previous right. statement or question, um, maybe not so much like Alzheimer's, but definitely people that have health conditions, you know, if they're not going to wear a bracelet, like they have like type one diabetes, I've done right. those types of tattoos on people before. Okay, cool. And what about, all right. So I saw something, it was tattoos, uh, as, as they were calling it, <laughs> like, uh, you know, so people have had, has met mastectomies and yep. they've decided not to do any kind of like uh, a prosthetic or any kind of augmentation. I'm just like, you know what, fuck it. I'm taking control of my own life and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to control this disease in my way. And they would get tattoos of, you know, over their, the, the areas where they have scar tissue to, um, you know, to beautify their breast in, in the way or their chest or whatever. I don't, I don't know what you call it, but to, to you know, to, to deal with, you know, having to have their breasts removed. Have you done any of those? I have, uh, not so much on women who not gone on uh, gone under augmentation um but i've there's a website i can't remember the name of the site but there was a website just for that and it showed pictures of all these cancer survivors some augmented some not and all the different types of things they did and none of them were like nipple reconstruction tattoos they were all like floral or designs or you yeah. know a- any sort of thing that they were into just to to cover up and feel better about themselves. Mm. Now I did have I a, a customer that uh, she yeah. um, had some pretty bad scarring, but she had augmentation and um, putting the nipples back on just wasn't going to make them look good again because of all right. the scarring. So we did like a large lily on each breast and she loved them because she yeah, felt so awesome. much better. Yeah. yeah. And I have a good friend who does the, like the 3d nipple tattoos uh, for women and they're just, they look just like regular nipples. They're amazing. And the really? women are so happy with, with those tattoos. It mm. changes their lives. Yeah. You know, it's, it's wild because you wouldn't think like, you know, you, you wouldn't think that that would make that much of a difference in somebody's life. Uh, but, but you haven't experienced it, you know, and you don't know. Uh, and and I'm, I'm sure it really does. Like um, one of the other things I'd, I've seen before is like people have had, they've lost a limb. Or, or you know, mm-hmm. or a finger or something, and they'll get a tattoo to like turn it into something that's cooler. You know, like I saw someone had they had a tattoo where they they'd lost their forearm to a to a um to something. What I don't know what it was, but they they had it like I think they put like at the end of a shark's mouth on it. Yeah, I've seen like, that. They do, they do some really <laughs> cool stuff, and I I think that is a really awesome way to uh you know to, to own what has happened it creates a cool story and it's like you know it's kind of hard to feel sorry for somebody who has like a really badass shark tattoo on the end of their stump you yeah know? and so, you know they have a good sense of humor and yeah you got yeah. to that's good yeah you move on with life and have fun with it yeah 
Hey, Pete, what is this alien abduction syndrome? All right, Jim, tell us about it. You've told me about this. Tell our audience about alien abduction. I love this. I, this is one of like my fucking favorite things. I love this. So we've had in the past um, a couple of times, the shop that I used to work at before we opened Saints and Sinners, uh, sometimes people would pass out, whether they were nervous or low blood sugar, a combination of the two. But when they come to, they have no idea that they've passed out. And a lot of times when people pass out, they'll start to like flounder a little bit or like almost fall out of the chair. So sometimes we'll sit there and hold them in place in the chair or we have somebody else come and help hold them up and uh, get some water or smelling salts or whatever. And I've had people like come to and freak out that there's someone standing there holding them and they get up and like run out of the shop. <laughs> <laughs> well, like several people, you know, because they've passed out, right? So their friend is in the room with them. Jim calls a, uh, you know, one of his coworkers in to come and like, all right, get a hold of them. So they wake up and they look up and there's like three people standing around them, looking down on them, you know, like you would imagine <laughs> alien abduction. <laughs> and they fucking ah! and just freak out, yeah. And you try to tell them, oh, you passed out, like, no, I didn't. <laughs> That's awesome. That's so funny. Oh, so so what about okay. what right. about? What about these cosmetic tattoos? Like people getting their, their lips, like they will get their lips uh, done in a, like a oh. pink or like they get their eyebrows done. I, I just, maybe it's a good idea. Maybe it's cool. I'm, I'm having a hard time. Like, like, but how do you know you want your lips to always be that color? I, I don't know. Yeah, what, do you, what, do you, I, what are your I thoughts agree. on that? <laughs> I'm not a big fan. I, I think that it makes them seem kind of lazy. Yeah. <laughs> they don't want to get up and like put makeup yeah. on. They just want to have it there permanently. But yeah, what if you change your style? What if, the, mm -hmm. the fashion trends change, you know, and maybe black eyeliner isn't in anymore and you want to do something different. Uh, it does fade over time, you know, and cosmetic tattooing does need like some upkeep over the years. Uh, but I'm not a big fan of it. And it, it, that takes some special training too. And something that I don't think that I would want to do. Right. So, so when people come in and they ask you for it, do you just tell them, look, that's not really something I do. Oh yeah. Yeah. We don't do cosmetic tattooing. Okay, cool, cool. And, you know, I remember before you were talking about, like, there's certain tattoos that, that you're very hesitant to do, like hand tattoos and face tattoos. How do you handle that when you get an 18-year-old kid comes in and he wants, like, a skull, like, right here? Do you try and those job out stoppers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> job stoppers. Um, we, in the past, we always had this rule, like, if someone came in to get their hand tattooed, they had to be pretty well covered before they take that next step. But that was back in the day when people still frowned upon tattoos a lot, you know, um, just like what you experienced. Right. So, but it's a different world now. And I, you know, the receptionist at one of my doctor's offices has hand tattoos. And I told her, I was like, wow, I'm glad to see that you can have a good job with tattoos yeah. on your hand. That's great. Um, so the world is definitely changing, but we still... Uh, it just depends on the situation. Everyone's a little different. You know, some young kid comes in, they want something like that. Like, unless you're already pretty well covered, like you need to make sure that you can live with that stuff in other spots. That's kind of visible, like your forearm or something. Um, right. So like hands, necks and faces, we typically won't do unless they're a little bit older and like proven that they're committed to having tattoos. Right. Right. So like a, a successful business owner comes in and says, Hey, I want a tattoo on my hand. You're kind of like, yeah, sure. We're not, whatever. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, we, we talk to them a little bit, find out what they do for a living and that sort of thing. Cause we don't want to take the blame for them losing their job or not getting a job or something like that. Dealing with that sort of thing from the public for the rest of their lives. Right. Hey, Jim, if, what would be the one tattoo that if you are asked to do it one more time, you're literally going to cut your hand off? What, what, is, <laughs> what, what is like, oh, my God, if I have to do a blank one more time? Uh, Confederate flag. Oh, dear. <laughs> there you go. There you have it. Oh, right. <laughs> They're not fun to do anyway. Ha you have know. you just on principle, if someone's like, if someone comes in and goes, yeah, I want a tattoo of Trump right here. Do you go, no, uh, get the fuck out of my shop? Or yeah, are you yeah. like, hey, it's just going to cost you double. <laughs> yeah, that's a tough one because either I can make a lot of money on it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or I could just, you know, stick to my, uh, my you know, or keep my uh, integrity and say, right. I get the hell out of here. This definitely would not want to Because your that. name is attached to that. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, Jim, Jim. Oh, I just tattooed Oompa Loompa. Loompa. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, no, but Loompa I, so I imagine like like swastikas and stuff are out, right? I mean, you're not doing any. Oh, yeah. We're not doing any racist tattoos. Good. Uh, I did actually have uh, a long discussion with a guy, a black guy who wanted a swastika tattooed on his neck. And I, we told him no. And he was like, why? You know, it doesn't mean that for me. For me, it's a symbol of a sun. And it is an ancient symbol that's sure. been you know, changed and mutilated. Mm -hmm. And uh, now everybody just associates it with Nazis. Um, and that's fine. And we won't do those sort of things. But after a long discussion with him, you know, I ended up tattooing it on him. Hmm. Right. Because it, it was the ancient Indian tattoo, right? Of, of Yes. Uh, like peace I thought and it was a Hindu. Or, uh, or Hindu. That's what, well, yeah, Indian Hindu. Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. Sorry. Uh, and, yeah. and actually, you say in Indian, many Indian. cultures, yeah. it's a simple design. So it's, you know, not mm -hmm. difficult to see that it's been used by different cultures across sure. the world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I, I don't, oh, okay. I, I got one for you. Like, okay, uh, Jim, you are very familiar with the, with the older generation and Jews and tattooing, right? I mean, my yeah. father told me when I was a senior in high school, he said, if you get a tattoo, you're out of this house. Well, I immediately in senior week, and we will get to this in a little while, I went down and got a tattoo because, I mean, you know, he challenged me. I love you. Right. But. Defiant um, to the core. Right. But, I mean, you know, that's that uh, our parents' generation uh, who were Jewish were like, you know, that is not something you do because of the whole, you know, tattooing in, in, in the camps. That said, I was so surprised that I saw a hipster guy at, at a um, – what is that? This place, uh, you guys may know about it. It's called Clean Barber. It's on um, in Rosedale. Anyway, it's this haircutting place, very mm -hmm. hipster. And this, this guy, he was clearly Jewish, and he had a Star of David tattooed on his head, like, uh -huh. you know, like right here. And I was like, oh, my God, that is I, – like, I, I'm just like, wow, that's so interesting. I didn't think, like, oh, my God, how could he do that? Because that's just not how I roll. But, <laughs> um, wow. Well, I think that, like – how your parents reacted is how most parents reacted Jewish or not. Mm -hmm. um, but we used to hear that they wouldn't bury you in the Jewish cemetery if you had a tattoo. Right. But things change just, right. you know, our world is changing and progressing. Um, a lot of the older generations are dying off and they're not holding those, you know, the same whatever rules or guidelines uh, to the younger generations. And, um, Someone said they spoke to a, a Jewish, um, what would you call it? it um, can't even think of the word. Uh, Rabbi? No, no. Um, mortician. Okay. And they mm. said that they would not turn away a, a body just because mm. it had a tattoo on it. Right. So it changed things. And I've heard that there's been a rabbi that was tattooed. Um, oh, wow. We, we tattoo a, a lot of Jewish people. Oh, sure. Now, like, yeah. Nowadays, I'm, sure. Yeah. But hey, back then, which, we didn't, not too many. Speaking of which, my, my, uh, my, so when you tattooed Terry and her mom saw it, she was like, oh, ruined my perfect daughter. She, <laughs> she was so upset. And so funny. That's right. And I, it's, I, and it's a beautiful tattoo. Oh my God! It is amazingly beautiful tattoo that you did for her. The, the flower pattern. It was, it's awesome. As she she said she wants to come in and and she needs a some uh, she needs another flower. I think she's gonna have put on there. Yeah. Some, oh no no! She wants to have London's birth date put on the foot that you did that that her and I shared. Okay, oh, that's cool. Yeah. So uh, so Mike, let's do the. It's a good segue. Uh, Mike, you have something you want to show. You want to you want to confess well, no, I, to the audience? I no. Well, I thought we'd have an interesting time. Um, we're a small time operation here, um, and uh, earlier today I was watching a video where uh, tattoo artists, you know, professional tattoo artists, were critiquing um, other YouTubers' um, work, and I figured this is as close as we're ever going to get to that. Um, I have <clears throat> what could be considered. Uh, in some circles, a tattoo, and uh, Pete obviously has tattoos, so we are going to let Jim uh, critique our tattoos, and uh, then obviously let uh, you know let the audience kind of get in on it on it too. But um, Pete, I think you should go first. Okay, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna show off the tattoo that. Well, I, I guess okay. So so Jim did. This is my first tattoo. I think you can see it here, uh, and it goes all over. So it's hard for me to show yeah. the whole thing, and then. I've got 
you know, I got stuff goes off on my side, my back, and, and he did a foot. But the one, and that, that's the one Jim, we're not going to critique that because Jim did it, so it's unfair for Jim to critique his own work. Because yeah, he Jim already said awesome, it's a right? fine <laughs> tattoo. <laughs> right. so, it's perfect. So, so I, I went on a work trip, and, and Terry's watching. So, Terry, you're going to hate this. I'm sorry, whatever. Uh, Terry hates this tattoo, so I'm just going to get that out there. Um, I, was, I went to Uranus, Missouri. Oh God! And, right. Yes, I went to Uranus, Missouri, and I and the, and so it's this this little town, uh, not even a little town. It's like it's up on a hill, and it's it's like this this little area, and and it used to be a strip club up there, and the 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 guy the the town kind of forced his strip club out, and he was pissed off about it, so he renamed that whole area Uranus and put up a whole bunch of billboards, you know, come see Uranus. And he opened up, he, he, he sells fudge there. So it's a, the, you can get your fudge packed in Uranus. And it's this whole like <laughs> yeah. thing is it, it's, it's a the whole axe thing. Is a joke. Yeah. You can throw yeah. Axes in the ax hole. Let the ax hole. Yeah. Anyway. So they have a tattoo place there. And while I was there on a work trip, um, I was I was hanging out. Yeah, she says I hate it. I was hanging out with <laughs> some of my some, some awesome. of the work, some of the people I work with, and I was like, we're sitting in the the bar drinking, eating dinner. And I was like, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get a Uranus tattoo. And they're like, you're fucking crazy. What? Are you, what? And I'm like, I'm gonna do it. Let's do it. So we went over, and so here it is. Here it is. Here's my Uranus tattoo. So that's it. It's a rocket ship. And the word Uranus on it, and um, well, I wait, like wait, 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 wait. Jim, Jim, did you get a, yeah. a, okay, enough wait, of a look on, at wait, it, wait, or wait, does wait, he need wait, to take a, take a look? All right, yeah, I'll, see it. Uh, like, stick it on the camera there, okay? Yeah. So what do you what are your thoughts on that? I think it's funny. Yeah, it's I, it's, a, it's a fairly clean tattoo. It doesn't look bad at all. Mm -hmm. Right. Hmm. Um, but it's a good, um, like it's a souvenir tattoo. That's what yeah. I say. Oh, there okay, you go. So it's a souvenir tattoo. I have to agree with Terry, okay? So I'm thinking, this is my thoughts on this. So Terry says she hates where it is. And I kind of sort of agree. I want to get your opinion on this. Because this is sort of like a display area. These The tattoos that you get here are sort of like your premier, it's your, it's your premier canvas. You know what I mean? It's like, it's where you show your best stuff. I feel like I probably should have got it on my leg. That seems to me like a leg tattoo. What, what do you think, mm, Jim? I agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that, that makes sense. So Now, that, that said, though, you could still show your best stuff around Uranus. No, <laughs> no so, so what I'm thinking is, so this is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking about, Jim, getting you to do a cover-up on it, doing something really, I have an idea for something cool. And then I'll go back to Uranus, because it's Fort Leonard Wood is, is a, a base I work at f every couple of years or so. And I'll just go get another one and get it on my leg. So it'll be like, a, it's kind of like I move it. You know, and what are you going to have I'd, the other one removed? No, 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 just have them, it'll just, just be a cover. It, oh. Jim could cover that up, no problem. Yeah, no problem. Okay, be before <laughs> I show you mine, and and I am I am uh, I'm hot I'm hot to trot on that. Uh, I meant to ask about this. What is tattoo removal like these days? Uh, and is that something that tattoo artists are going to end up doing? Whether you can just go in and have something removed and have a new new thing put on, or is it sort of still kind of not in that that? So typically, like. Technology is a laser removal, mm -hmm. uh, and that's been the same for a while. They've made advances with the lasers, and the laser is a little more efficient. It's not very comfortable. I had mm -hmm. some laser work done on myself, and um, it definitely hurts, but it goes really quick. Um, there's a newer technology. Um, there's a couple of different systems for removing tattoos now. One is like whiting it out with white tattoo ink. Um, and it like gradually lightens over time and then you would like put something over top of it and there's another one that's similar that's um, a bunch of dots I don't recall what the system is called um, there is a shop in the Baltimore area that does that and it is done by tattooers uh, but the lasers have to be done by doctors they made laws about that they changed the rules in DC in Maryland it's always been doctors so you cannot get that done <clears throat> at a, a tattoo shop. Hmm. Unless you're a tattooing doctor. So, yeah. <laughs> all right, Mike, Mike, your turn, buddy. All let's, right. Let's so see this train wreck. I, I've, I've saved everyone um, their, their dinners, and I've, I've, I've taken a picture of it, just even for me to get all nastified and get the – no, we're not going to do that. So uh, here is my uh, tattoo uh, right 
here. Uh, and uh, just, you know, I, I want you to, uh, this is, uh, gosh, 25, 30 years old now, right? 30? True. 30 years old. Uh, and, um, yeah, I know, it, it, is, it is basically a blotch. Which me, which is what you were saying, is going to be so easy to cover up because, and and I have a drawing, a drawing, of um, what it was supposed to be because you had asked me that um, before, before Jim. You were like, "What what was that?" Because you're right, it looks like a jack. It's just, and now it, this is a star man, a star man face, um, and I'm not even going to try and explain it. I'm gonna you 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 I've I've you've suffered enough. Let me um, let me stop sharing. And then let me hold this up. So this is what it was. <laughs> oh. Oh, that's so, bad. Uh, that's so bad. I guess that sounds like nervous laughter. Like uh, maybe uh, your your little <laughs> what what? <laughs> okay. So when I was in high school, this is what I drew. Right? It was just it was something I drew all the time. Um, it's a face. You know, you can see it as a face. As, as just a simple little tag that with, with someone who controls stick figures, uh, that's all I got. That's all I got, bro. Okay? So, um, that said, uh, that. What? we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna have to cover that. Yeah, right? let's cover that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and and, and uh, I think, uh, I think I'm, I'm pretty sure, and I think it'll be really fucking easy now that, we, that I think about it, is to do it with the Mythwits logo. There you go. Um, so and that's on your arm, your upper yes. arm. Yeah, yeah. It's like how, over the past thirty years, how much has that seen sun? Uh, I don't. Uh, probably you know, really not like as a sun much. worshiper. Yeah, I mean, I'm not like out there tanning all the time, and you know, I I, I am a very good tanner. I have a European. Um, I have like wet. No, it's it's. Uh, what is it western european like like believe it or not russians have like a darker skin you're like sun-kissed yeah yeah <laughs> while you're out there like chopping wood and stuff you know yeah yeah <laughs> sure said, Mike, yeah. someone said you could cover it with a blob and it would be better <laughs> well Lynn, they're not lying right <laughs> said that. Blob. Lynn said Hallett. That. oh oh yeah uh-huh you put a nice little flower over that yeah. Come on now, we're talking about the Mythwits logo. Come on, we can do we can we can do something with that, right? Yeah, we, we can make it happen. All right, make you uh, feel comfortable in your own skin again. Oh right. Jesus! Yeah. yeah, it is really bad. I mean, yeah. oh, on the on a, a positive note, um, it's little. <laughs> two years after I got it done, and I was still living at home, but I was soon to be married off. Um, my dad saw pictures of us in Arizona. Um, that we brought back from Arizona and we had pictures and he's looking, he's like looking at this picture of me in a tank top. He's like, what is that? Is that, is that a tattoo? And I was like, Oh fuck. I might be moving out a little early, you know? <laughs> and he's like, let me see it. And then he's just like, Oh, Oh, that's cool. I like that. I'm like, wow. Okay. All that, all that, you know, subterfuge and walking around out of the shower with a <laughs> towel. And... <laughs> sure. You got that one on your leg too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I should have not. So what do you gotten... think, Mike? What do you think about covering that up with? What do you the Mythwits logo? Just, you think yeah, I think the Mythwits logo. Why not, man? Yeah. All right. Get your art out there, Pete. <laughs> so, 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 Jim, I remember. So there was one point. I think Terry had gone to the hospital because she was having a hard time breathing or something, and they had saw the tattoo on her, and they. This was crazy to me. They were like. They wanted to x-ray her lungs to make sure a needle didn't puncture her lungs, which I thought was just fucking that is ridiculous. ridiculous. I know, right? That's what that I That comes from like, someone who has no idea how tattoos work. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, what the fuck? What do you think it shot out of the gun and like went through her lungs? Not... I have another story that along the stupidity line there. And, uh, a couple of our, a couple of friends of ours were getting married and we were invited to the reception, which was at the restaurant next to my tattoo shop and um the girl had gotten a large back piece from me and she'd gotten a whole sleeve done in a traditional japanese style like the traditional japanese way with a hand poke yeah. um but her mother i guess had never really seen the tattoos and they're very religious and from like south carolina or north carolina one of those carolinas anyway uh 
So they came up for the wedding and for the first time saw the tattoos and uh oh. Hey Jim, check your connection. Something um I'm losing you. It was a short. Is there a short? Just Uh oh. Check your mic. Uh oh, we got a short. We got a problem here. Yeah, my there cat just chewed through my headphones. Nice. <laughs> no, oh, that's not a first on this show. Believe that's it or not. not. A, believe it or not, that's not a first. I had I had my dog chewed through my network cable. Yeah, that was. <laughs> so fun. Go ahead. You're good. You're good. Keep going. What was it now? See, the uh, the mother was like, "If they have kids, are they going to come out with tattoos on them already?" <laughs> oh, it's in their DNA. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so <laughs> that's funny. Um, there he goes. Yeah, yeah, Terry's saying there he goes. Yeah, so, um, so we were talking about before, like, like where tattooing has gone and where it's come to. Um, where, what are you seeing nowadays? What are people? What, what is like the the like the, the the big tattoos of today? Like, what are people like going towards? Because our tribal was for a while. What what are we doing now? Um, it's all over the place. Um, Floral designs are always popular. That'll never go out of style. Uh, traditional American kind of tattoos, that's, that'll never go out of style. Um, we're, I'm starting to do a lot of Polynesian tribal, which is basically patterns, um, sort of along the lines of geometric, and I guess that's why geometric is very popular now. Right. And some of these things work better as like large scale tattoos, like geometric definitely works better as like a sleeve rather than just like a small piece on your arm. Um, floral tattoos can be any size. Polynesian tattoos also work better as like large sleeves or, you know, arms, legs, backs, that sort of thing. Um, it's just kind of all over the place. Uh, watercolor tattoos, trash polka, you know, those are usually pretty big. Um, there's like, I don't know, like how many styles that are really popular now, but a fair amount, you know, and I do a, a good variety of stuff. I don't like to back myself into a corner and just to do the same sort of thing. A lot of tattooers are like that though. They like just the one style that they're fond of and that's what they specialize in. Uh, but I worked at a street shop where I did all sorts of different stuff. And I think if I did the same kind of thing all the time, I would get bored. Yeah, um, yeah. So it's it's nice to be able to like one day I'm doing a bunch of flowers and the next day I'm doing like Polynesian stuff and the next day I'm doing like reproductions of like Greek statues and you know right. those sort of things. So hey, so Grant, Mike Deming. Know, but, hey, Mike yeah. Deming. Listen. Hey, why don't you go down to the corner and get some and then you come back here, okay? <laughs> you come back here to some. That's a little inside joke there. So so Grant. <laughs> You know, our buddy Grant, he's saying, he's saying, will blackout go out of style? I don't know. Uh, maybe completely blacking out like an arm or something. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of that. Oh. Well, so we're, now we're seeing another trend where people are getting their arm blacked out or something blacked out, typically an arm, and then they're going over it with white tattoo ink and doing like white patterns and designs over top of the faded out black. Does that work? I'm not sure how that's going to last. Okay. I was going to say that. that know, it's, it's newer, so there's no saying like what it's going to look like in 10 years. Right. You've done, oh. you've done Biomech stuff, right? Yeah. Is that, is that stuff holding up or is it like. Oh, yeah, that's holding up. Because cool. that stuff, again, it's usually big, bold stuff. Mm -hmm. um, it can be black and gray or color, you know, and it's. It works great as cover-ups because you can make it do whatever you want. There's hey, no, maybe that's like, what we should do for me. We'll do it, look, make it look like the skin's ripping, and then no, inside no. is the Mythwits logo. What, it's, Pete? It's not 1995. <laughs> it's not 1995. Well, I can't get a tramp stamp Why don't here? you just get a panther tearing the skin off? And I mean, come on. <gasps> <laughs> oh, you can do that? Right. So, Jim... Jim, you, you want to talk, uh, one of the things you mentioned in your thing, you want to, you, so you've tattooed all kinds of places. You've tattooed, you, you do a lot of conventions and stuff, but you've tattooed on TV, right? Uh, no, I have not tattooed on TV. Oh, well, oh, oh, you want to talk about tattooing on TV, people on yeah. TV tattooing. Sorry, sorry, I misunderstood that. <laughs> all right, so, so what about these TV shows, these, the reality shows then, I guess, is what you're talking about. So, like, like uh, Cat D and. <laughs> the reality shows started like shortly after we opened uh, mm. my shop. 
And it was actually really good because uh, before then, everything had a season. Like tattooing had a season. There's still seasons, but not as pronounced as they used to be. Mm. Um, you know, people would get tattooed when they got their tax money. Springtime, going into summer, people are wearing less clothes and showing more skin and thinking about it. They're seeing other tattoos, so it makes them think about getting tattooed. Uh, but then back to school time and holidays start coming in. People are saving their money for that sort of thing. So it always die off in the fall. Um, we get a little spike right around Christmas, and then it would die off again until tax time. So when Miami Inc. first came on, it came on in the fall. And that year, it was like summer all year long. Like we were busy all year, nice. which was great for business. And it kept going like that for the next few years. And then all these other shows started coming out, all these other shows. And then they started like the uh, contest formula, like Best Ink and Ink mm -hmm. Master and those sort of things. And what people don't, well, the general public doesn't really get is that reality TV isn't real. You know, right. a lot of stuff is scripted. It's edited for content. It has to have some sort of drama in there to make it interesting and appealing to the public. Because who wants to watch someone getting tattooed for an hour? It's pretty boring. It's pretty boring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and then like, you know, some of those shows like in Miami Inc., for instance, you know, they wanted everyone to think that these guys all came together and opened their own shop. And that's not really the case. They were cast for the show. Mm. You know, they lived down there during the, the filming of the show, but they all worked at different shops. Some of them had their own shops in different parts of the countries. And after they were filming, they would go back to those things. Uh, in the application process to get tattooed on the show, you couldn't just walk in there and get tattooed on TV. You know, you had to present a story. And if you didn't have a good story, you had to create a story. And um, if they didn't think that your story and your tattoo idea was good enough to be on the air, then you had the option of being tattooed by one of the minions in the back room somewhere. You know, right. so it wasn't all it was presented to be. And then, you know, the, the shows like Ink Master, uh, you know, People say, oh, I'd never get tattooed by that guy. He's messed up that tattoo. And they don't really understand like how that format works. Um, you know, you're trying, to, you're pulling together, again, people who are cast for their personalities and their skills. Um, there's definitely going to be some amazing artists that they have to, you know, have people that are easily make it to the finish. And there's going to be some artists that aren't that great who are going to get cast out, you know, pretty quickly. Um, but they're trying to find somebody who's good at everything, not at the one style. So you might have one guy on there who's amazing at black and gray, but he struggles with color. And just because he does a bad color tattoo doesn't mean he shouldn't tattoo you. You know, you wouldn't go to him for color anyway. You would go to him for what he's good at. Right. Um, you know, and they always come up with goofy ideas of like different contests for the show and like, oh, well, this time we're going to do sculpture or this time we're going to like, paint on paper, you know, like some of those things don't really have anything to do with tattooing. They're just trying to spice up the show mm -hmm. when every season goes on and on and they don't want it to be the same thing. So they have to come up with new ideas, but, um, and in drama, the, always have drama in the oh, yeah. shop. Yeah. And like, we know people who've been on those shows and we've been approached to be on the shows, but we won't do it. It's, you know, a lot of people in the industry, reputable people, you know, look down on that. Like you don't, gain a lot of respect for being on Ink Master, um, but it will make you some money, you know, because you work conventions and you advertise, advertise that you've been on Ink Master and then you'll be busy all day long. You can charge higher prices and all that sort of thing, but, like, yeah. do you really want that? Oh, no. Who the hell wants to make more money? That's just bullshit. You're right, man. You're right, bro. Uh, it's <laughs> called integrity. It's called yeah. integrity. All right, dude, we, we are, like, really running like out of time and i so yeah. wanted to get into a star wars discussion but i don't know if we're gonna have time so i don't know pete what do you we got we can do either a do quick a question do you, have a, do you have a quick thing you want to bring up? you do a lot of star wars tattoos i see that. i love doing star wars tattoos i yeah. do a lot of them uh we My have one rotating like I have a, <laughs> you can't see it but i have uh, images rotating on the on the side on our on a format that our audience sees and uh -huh. uh, one of the, the you just recently did a it's one of the emperor's guards a red yeah, um, yeah. Guard. that was on may 4th i do star wars tattoos all day on may the 4th nice. oh yeah oh yeah of course right 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 yeah 
Um, so what? Let me ask you, what is your favorite tattoo? Can you name a favorite tattoo that you've done? Like somebody's come in and you were just like, wow, you know what? Um, you know, that that was just, I love doing that tattoo. Does anything stick out? Um, there's a number of them in recent years that I've really enjoyed doing. And like right now I'm really into um, like Greek statue reproductions, like black and gray, like larger format. Like the head of the statue would take up like half your arm sort of size, you know? Um, I did a, a it was about a year or so ago, I did this um, geometric sleeve on the guy and he, every time he came in for an, his appointment, he'd bring a stack of papers of different patterns and we'd just sort through them and just kind of figure out which pattern we'd want to do on which section of his arm. And I found one pattern that looked like, it was an optical illusion, but it looked like you could grab a hold of it, like there was a hole in his arm and you can you could just grab it. Hmm. And that turned out really cool, and I was really happy with that. And every time I see that tattoo, I, I'm really proud that I did that. Nice. 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 Cool. Nice. All right. Well, I guess, yeah, we are running on time, Mike. Good good call on the time. So, I know. I hate to be the t- the time yeah. master. but we, we, Dude, my, uh, uh, Jim, we used to go like – we would go like two and a half hours with people before, and we found out that people don't want to watch that long. So yeah. we, we try to get a tight timeline to one hour. Plus, our guests are, are happier when we, we keep it to one hour. So let's wrap it up. Let's let's do any last thoughts, uh, Jim. Did you want to uh, give any people some advice or anything on like you know, hey, I, I'm thinking about getting a tattoo, but I don't have one yet. What 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 would you tell them? Um, I think that there's still a lot of bad artists out there. So def- definitely do your homework, do some research. I'm not saying that you have to come to my shop. Uh, there's a lot of good shops these days. It's not like it used to be, uh, but there's still a lot of bad shops. So do your homework and research on the artist. You know, find an artist whose style goes along with what you want to do. Um, and even if you don't have like an idea set in stone, you know, don't ask the artist to do whatever he wants on you. Like come up with some sort of idea and then let the artist have some of his own free will in there, you know, like have his input, his flair on it. Um, then the artist is going to enjoy doing it a bit more. You know, if it's something that he enjoys doing. Right. Right. I mean, so that's the biggest... showing up with your own design just, you know, but you, if you, if you could bring an artist in, you know, you probably want them to have some input on it cause they're, you know, they're an artist. Yeah. They're... No, I mean, if you bring it into like a simple little design, you don't have to go to the top notch artist to do that. You know, Pretty much anyone in the shop can do that. But if you're really looking for art, you know, choose an artist whose work you really like and will work well with your style. Like I've had people come in and like, oh, I really like your work. I want to get a like a traditional eagle. I'm like, well, I don't do traditional, so I'm not really sure how you chose me um, <laughs> for what right. you want. Well, none of my images are traditional. <laughs> oh, but Jim, you're my guy. You're my guy. <laughs> No, I'm not. <laughs> right. Yeah, like if I said, Jim, this is what I want, and you're like, really? You want Frank. You don't want me. I'd be like, mm, I trust you, you know? <laughs> and these days, if you're going to a, uh, like a reputable shop, like being sanitary is not really a concern anymore. Like almost every re- reputable shop is going to be doing things on the up and up, like single-use stuff. Um, everything's very clean. It's not really as big of a concern as it used to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd say when when I went to the the Uranus the 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 tattoo shop in Uranus, you know, you would think you know, it's a goofy place, right? You know, no, this guy he spent like I don't know a half an hour prepping. Like he pulled yeah. out all the stuff. It was all like he had to open up everything fresh. He changed his gloves. I think he changed his gloves four times. <laughs> you know, he he was very and he kept cleaning and washing his hands and stuff. This guy was very very clean, very professional. I I, I was. I was really amazed. I was like, wow, this, this guy is really thorough. I mean, he, he, you know, he, he didn't fuck around. He was very serious about what he was doing. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's important and it's, right. uh, it's good that he is like that. Everybody should be. Yep. And I would just like to say, screw everyone in the chat room who's saying, no, you got to get a rose, Mike, get a rose. Oh, you should get a rose. No, I'm not getting a rose. <laughs> well, it, it, Terry said it. It's a joke. It's a joke. It's a, it's a joke with us. We, we went to a friend of hers house and she had this rose tattoo, and she's like, "You can't go wrong with a rose." And Terry and I looked at, looked at each other. And later on, we were like, "Oh yes, you can. Yes, you can." <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So anyway, that was sort of an inside joke with us. All yeah. right, hey Mike, let's let's wrap this up. So let's so, wrap it up, bro. 
everybody, please make sure, especially if you're in the Baltimore area, but if you want to travel down to Baltimore, Jim will see you. Saints and Sinners Inc. Dot com. Check out uh, check out the website. Um, the right down at Fells Point. Fells Point is awesome. Um, again, you know we have people from all over. If if you want to come to Baltimore, it's a great place to visit. Uh, Fells Point is awesome. It's a really cool. Uh, just stay away from North Avenue. <clears throat> stay, hey, no, stay. North Avenue's happening, bro. Is it really? North Avenue is where it's at. It's it's gentrified. We're also on Instagram. Yeah. yeah. You know, we have uh, more updated pictures on our Instagram than on the website. Okay, oh, yeah, and definitely. Uh, Check out Saints and Sinners Tattoo. Saints okay. and Sinners Tattoos on Instagram. That is definitely where to go to, to and, look uh, at some good work. Judicus underscore tattoo. Nice. nice. My Instagram. Awesome. awesome. All right, Jim, thanks for joining us. And I'm going to be coming down, uh, coming back in uh, May, the end of May. So uh, June, I'll have to come down and get some work done. I'll have, uh, I'll have per diem money. So, <laughs> and overtime. So I'll be able, I'll be able to get something. I want to, I want to do a solar system over here, like the, the solar yeah. system and like a whole space theme thing, but very colorful. I want you to. You're going to put Uranus in there? Yeah, Uranus is definitely going to be prominent. I want that or anyway. Mm. Yeah, but absolutely. Deep so, in Uranus. A deep, deep. Use a deep pen on that one. So anyway. All right. Let's do Sounds the good. thing. All right. Uh, here we go. You've just enjoyed another awesome episode of The Myth Which is a really good one. Uh, if you don't have time for videos, make sure to subscribe to our podcast via your favorite podcatcher. Do the like, follow, subscribe thing wherever it's appropriate. And make sure to share your favorite episode on social media to help spread Mythwits love over the entire planet. And hey, you can always get a Mythwits logo tattoo. I'll send you the original file in high resolution. Uh, tweet us at Mythwits and check out Mythwits.com. Mythwits is produced by Aether Forge Creations as part of the TSR Podcast Network. Check out TSRPN.com and AetherForge.com for more cool stuff. Uh, Mythwits is a Creative Commons product. Like and share it in all the places. Just don't edit it. Don't sell it. And for God's sakes, don't freeze it in carbonite and sell it to a crime boss. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Tell your friends to tune in. And until next week, Mike? Coins. Coins. Let the dogs lose. Do a handstand. That is so inside, Mike. So inside. <laughs>